Okay, welcome to the Super Over, a cricket podcast where we just get some of the best players from the world of cricket. We chat life and we field some of your questions as well. I'm Liam Flint. I was late to the, my own podcast today, so apologies for that. JP's just reminded me of my failings. So I'm joined by Gemma Rodericks, who's an India batter. She joins us from Mumbai. We've got JP Dumini, former South Africa. I'm going to call him batsman who bowls a little bit when needed. Thank you. And our, I thought I'll change that because you're not really an all-rounder, especially okay. now. Thank you. And Thanks our Nick. special guest for today, another former South African, still tearing it up in the world of T20, A.B. De Villiers joins us. Woo! Welcome, A.B. Yeah. Welcome, Abe. Thanks, guys. Good morning. It's nice to be here. Uh, absolute pleasure to have you. You've uh, got us up early. So I've just yeah. literally had my breakfast. Managed to get on. But no, it's, I really appreciate your time, Abe. So thank you. No, thank you. It's, it's very interesting um, looking at all the names that I use. I see. I see Jim actually changed the name now. I don't know what because you were on your <laughs> name. And, it, it was and on you, my yeah. dad's name actually. I just now changed it. Oh, no, <laughs> and goes by his wife's name or someone. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't say Liam Flint. Um, I think I was trying to get brownie points, so that's my wife's name. <laughs> she's she's <laughs> South African, so I've obviously tried to uh, do that deliberately. <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll forget about that. But yeah, how, how's everyone doing? Let's have a, a quick couple minute chat. Has anything changed, Jemmy? What's going on your end? Now things have gotten much better here. So the lockdown has kind of eased out in Mumbai, but still there are again some rules that need to be followed. But yeah, again, I mean, this lockdown has taught us so much. Like as cricketers, we are so used to, you know, traveling around the world, living off our suitcases. So this was something like unique, but you know, it was actually a blessing in disguise because we also don't get time to spend it with our family. So this is actually a good bonding session for us. So I mean, yeah, it was great. So have you, Jim, have you uh, done some training at your private ground again or? <laughs> yes, I've been going there only. <laughs> it's not called the Roderick's Arena, by the way, just saying. Make yeah, maybe so for the previous, JP and... <laughs> in the previous discussion, she was, just, she was kind of boasting about this fact that even though they were at lockdown... I wasn't boasting. <laughs> they were at lockdown and uh, she had this opportunity now to go and practice by herself, but they closed off the stadium for her, so she's oh. a big shot in Mumbai. When you're good, you're good, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing like that, actually. <laughs> yeah, the door's just open for you. you yeah. Know, obviously. What's happening in the UK there, Liam? Oh, what's happening? So, yeah, I think much like Gemini, things are, are relaxing, things are, are okay this end now. Um, so, obviously, it's still very much get your masks out and precautions, stay at home if you can. But, yeah, people seem to be a little bit freer, um, kind of getting into height of summer. Everyone's keen to get outside now. Yeah. So, things, yes, things are starting to feel a little bit more normal. Uh, still not allowed to do any kind of gatherings. So, I think I've said before, like a big thing at the minute for our church is trying to work out how we're going to meet and things like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sports teams are trying to work out how to do cricket nets and all of this kind of stuff. So yeah, lots of challenges, but feeling like the country's getting to grips with things finally, yeah. which, is, which is pleasing. So yeah, I think every time we chat about this, it appears that it's getting slightly better. So all good from, from our end for now. Yeah, I'll end it. Uh, I was just actually reading up on a few articles. I don't know if you've seen AB. So um so the Western Cape is seen as the epicenter of, of the virus at the moment. And um, it, it, is, it is kind of gearing up for, for peak in, in, in numbers at the moment. So, I mean, peak is, it's, it's, it's a weird term because if you compare it to what has been happening in, in the UK over the last few months, it doesn't feel like a peak. But the Western Cape has had uh, over 350 deaths, I think, in the last week. Um, what, what's, what's been happening there in Pretoria, bro? No, we're very, very well behaved. Eh? <laughs> we follow the rules and the regulations. So well, you notice not as the Cape Townians who sneak out of their homes. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, nothing much. Right? It's obviously we, we try and stay in house as much as we can. But as you say now, uh, we're expecting a big peak um, or a rise in the numbers because winter is actually hitting now. It's really getting cold. Yeah. And they say the virus thrive in, in these kind of temperatures. So we're expecting a bit of a, a, bit of a peak. Yeah, it's it's kind of scary. I was actually just forwarding the uh, the article to my family and so forth because I think there's been an emphasis on particularly the elderly 
where you know they're obviously the most at risk at the moment and grandparents and parents so yeah it's it's i guess it's something that we have to all be aware of um but it is a little bit uh some anxious times now coming up where where you hear these things and see these things you know so be interesting to see how things unfold over the next uh, couple of weeks here in south africa yeah yeah I mean, that's the thing we're all just all uncharted and i'm sure we're going to get some waves at other points and it's just going to move around isn't it so yeah thing to say is our thoughts are with everyone if you're listening to this and you are affected yeah. our thoughts are with you um and hopefully we can take your mind off things by quizzing a b yeah. and make him as uh, uncomfortable as we can letting loose with some questions that's our plan um, <laughs> but yeah a b how are you feeling without the ipl which i know has become such a big part of your your calendar i mean how are you doing is it nice to have the rest or is it very much a case of you know i'm missing that opportunity I've, I've never really um, got too, too intense with those kind of things. I really just take it one day at a time. I try to as much as I can. Um, uh, there, there are things that's, as a golden rule in cricket that are out of your control that you, you shouldn't try and control. And, and this uh, postponement of the IPL and other tournaments in cricket around the world is completely out of my control. So why try and you know, get psyched up about it? Um, I've tried to stay fit. I've enjoyed other things in life uh, really I've got close with our family over the last few months, which has been a great privilege. Um, so that's basically what I try and do. I, I, I really just try and focus on the now, um, try and be the best version of myself every day. Um, I actually started eating some cricket balls last week, which has uh, been very entertaining, <laughs> to say the least. I expected myself to sort of come through still and eat it nicely, but I, I did scratch around a bit. Luckily, the last two, three minutes, I hit a couple in the middle, so I'm looking forward to next week to, oh, sorry, this week, later this week to, to try and eat them in the middle again. But uh, the, the, the moral of the story, what I'm trying to say is one day at a time, control what you can control. And for me at the moment, is to stay fit, stay healthy, and try and uh, be the best dad I can and husband. Yeah. And it's interesting because a lot of our viewers are obviously Indian, as, as, you, can, as you can expect. Um, and I'm sure you've, you've probably had this question posed at you many times and you've answered it. What, what has it been like being part of the, in terms of India now and the IPL, what has it been, what has it been like uh, being part of the, the RCB family for you? It's been amazing. Um, I, I think the first thing that comes to mind when you say that is just connections and friendships that I've, that I've developed and created over the years. It's, um, I, I mean, it's invaluable what I, the, the people I've met, um, the experiences I've had, the, the, the different grounds I've played at. I've been very fortunate to have been part of a, a family, as you mentioned. Um, people that have really looked after me and valued my input in the in the setup. And I think once you feel valued in a setup, um, it brings out the best in you as well as a player and as a person. Yeah. Um, what comes to mind as well, we haven't won a trophy yet, so that's definitely on the priority list to try and achieve over the next few years. But once again, in sport, it's not always about the results. It's more about creating memories and the experiences you have. Those are the things I think once you're really old, you'll, you'll remember. It's really the, the moments that, that you enjoyed um, in India, around the world, wherever, wherever I've been to in my career. So, so the interesting thing about what you said down there, eh? so we've got, we've got an Indian representative and we've got a UK representative. So they have won World Cups, right? So the two of us, we played together for many years. Uh, not won a World Cup. We've um, we've had to answer that question many times. Uh, so what I, what I thought I'll do is I'll take responsibility for this question because I don't want them to kind of pose uh, this question to us. So uh, let's let's take responsibility. <laughs> right? yeah. Take control, man. yeah. So as as South Africans, we've not we've not uh, gotten over the line, and and we've had to answer for that for I mean you know it for probably a decade now particularly while we've played. And um, you mentioned there that, that RCB hasn't gotten over the line. And, and I like the point you made with, you know, it's more than just that. But if you had to pose that question as we've had to answer it many times in South Africa, why do you think we haven't gotten over the line? How would you answer that from an RCB point of view? It's really a, a catch-22 and a very, very difficult question to answer. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, I, I'm built to, I, I, all I want to do is win. I'm extremely competitive, as you know, Jobs. I, yeah. I mean, play a little volleyball game, I want to win. So I could never just say, no, nah, it's okay, and it doesn't matter. I'll never answer it like that. But if you look at the last World Cup, Cricket World Cup, England, New Zealand, 
Yeah. If that is what winning a World Cup is about, I mean, they, <laughs> there were so many little moments where England could have lost that World Cup. Mm. Um, and I wouldn't say it's just individual brilliance that won them the World Cup either. New Zealand also sort of lost it and threw, uh, slipped through their fingers, you know? Yeah. So it can't just be about, hey, we won a World Cup and we're the best in the world and now my career is made. Yeah. There's got to be more to it. And that's, I don't, I won't say it makes me feel better that we haven't won one yet, but, um, I know there's more to it than just winning. Um, looking at that World Cup, I watched the highlights the other day, actually, again, Trent Bolt, leading that catch go at the boundary. I, I can't imagine what he must be there. must have gone through in the last year. Mm. But that was the World Cup done. I mean, if it comes down to a little lobby of a catch, yeah. um, you know how fickle it is. You sort of realize, okay, it's actually just a game, you know, you give it your best shot. And, and that's what it comes down to. Um, if I think about the 2015 World Cup, where we did a win it in, in New Zealand, I only have good memories of that. I, I feel we arrived on that night. We were there, we were present. We didn't stand back. We didn't crumble. Um, everything, all the odds were against us. The crowd, you know what it feel, what it felt like. Um, so it was just, I mean, it, it, you want to win. If you don't, you got to take the learning out of it and remember the great experiences you had. Mm. And if you had to transcend that into RCB, would you say it's very similar? It's, it's similar in a way. Um, Similar and different. I mean, we, we win the, in the final. We did crumble in that one final. So that's a bit of a sour sour taste in my mouth. Um, I was one of the guys at the wicket. Well, we did let it slip with the ball and towards the first inning. They got 220, yeah. which is always going to be a tough total to chase in the final. But we were 110 without loss after nine overs. So then you think again, hold on, we actually should have won it. Yeah. Um, but they had the best bowling, bowling team in, in the tournament by then at, at that time. Um, you've got to give them credit for that. They sort of intimidated us with that. Mm -hmm. um, Bouvier and the guys, I think they they defended like five, six and over in, in some of the games. So that was in the back of my mind and that sort of intimidated us. So well done to them, but we did crumble as well under the pressure. Yeah. A similar feeling, Jobs. Yes, we should have won it before, but it's sports. Eh? It's T20s. You know what it's like. Um, anyone in the day can win the game. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Jemmy is the the honorary Mumbai Indians fan here. What do you make of what do you make of RCB? What would the fans be saying? Because we always say it, there's so much talent, like AB's just said. Well, how would you sum it up from what you've seen over recent seasons? Um, to be very honest with you, even I don't know like <laughs> like what exactly is happening because if you go to see like RCB has like one of the best teams. Like they have Virat Kohli, they have ABD, and you know the batting lineup only doesn't get over. But uh, maybe it might be you know the small small things like uh, that make a huge difference for them. So if they can work on the small small areas, so I think it will be better for them. But as uh, AB said, you know it's more about making memories. It's more about playing the game with the intent and giving it the best because at the end it's a game. You know we never know what can happen, but as long as we you know give it our best, we can. You know, be happy that okay, we have done our best. So you know, the results are at the end not in our hands. No, for sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the catch twenty two comes in. It's a fine line. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really the right person to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting conversation. Like, I mean, what is a definitive answer that explains why you don't get over the line? I, I think as a South African. I mean, both of us and all of us, really, in the last decade, we've been trying, we've been scratching our heads and trying to find the the answer, um, and we've come up short. And 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 maybe that's the beauty of this game is that uh, you just don't know. You know what I mean? And, and if you had to, if you had to think it, think of it from a spiritual point of view, and if you think about faith, right? And and, and the Bible often speaks about how we only know in part, you know, you can, you can almost transcend it into that where you, you're trying to come up with answers. Why is this happening? Why it's happening at the moment, particularly in your life, in your career, but yet we are asked and called to have faith. And what is faith is believing in something that you can't necessarily see or feel. And, and, and it's always a, a tough thing. Um, but I think if we can just rewind a little bit to uh, just one last question regarding the IPL, and I think everybody wants to know this answer. So you, you've, you, you are certainly one of, um, you're very close to, to Virat. Mm -hmm. And I think even as a, as a cricketer that has played against him, um, you know, he's dominated many teams. In your experience of him, what would you say separates him from, from the rest? Uh, I'd say just desire and a, 
deep hunger that you can't get out of him. Um, I haven't played with him and against him. Uh, I've seen the same thing. Um, he's never, when you play against him for South Africa, you know he's not going to be a pushover, especially not if you're getting fired up. Yeah. I mean, he, once the competitive juice starts flowing, similar to me in a way, you don't want to show weakness, you don't want to let yourself down, you know, you, know, you, you want to be the guy to stand up. So I think that separates him. He, he does that even better than I do, and I, I feel I'm, I'm right up there when it comes to competitiveness and standing up. And I want to be the guy, you know? Mm. He does it consistently every single game I've ever seen him play. He does that. And I've, I believe that, similar to Steve Smith, why he does so well, he's not naturally the most fluent-looking batsman, but there's a deep desire that you just can't get out of him. I mean, he, he wants to be the fighter for the team. And, and Virat has got that in him. I mean, he's, he's born with that, I think. Yeah, not sure. And um, the big ultimate question, AB, who's better to watch from the non-strikers' end, JP Dumini <laughs> or Virat Kohli? Oh, <laughs> why do I always have to pick between players? <laughs> Especially with the one sitting here right in front of me. <laughs> you can say you can say Virat, it's fine, man. But <laughs> and and that's the, 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 the realization for me. But what you know, I saw a stat the other day, AB. I don't know if you've come across this, uh, but I thought to myself, you know what, I'm not necessarily part of the top 10 in, in various things but I was quite proud of this moment where I saw uh, somebody posted it that the two of us had the most unbeaten international partnerships I don't know if you saw that see we finished this we finished games right? yeah. <laughs> but the, 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 the beauty of that with my realization of that is I contributed 20% to that partnership which is, which is <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. No, look, Liam, JP and I grew up together. We've come a long, long way together. We played against each other to start off with, and then we've always been friends. I mean, um, batting together have always been a privilege. Uh, I think we, we share that same thing. We, we love winning, so we want to be there at the end for the team. We love being the guys to stand up, and that's probably why, as a partnership, we've always, so well, not always, but we, we have this record of finishing games and, and being there at the end. So I'm not surprised with that stat, Japs, and it's always been a pleasure batting with him. No, indeed. Yeah, unfortunately, when it comes to, to Virat, I mean, it, 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 takes, it takes us all down when it comes to step and, and what he's achieved over his career. I mean, no one, no one could compete with his numbers, so... Yeah, no shame, Jeffrey. No I, shame. I like how you, how, you, how you look for the correct words just to look after my ego there, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do it myself, eh? <laughs> no, all good, all good. Coming right after the call. Jemmy, who's your, who's the equivalent for you? Who do you love to watch from the other end? Like if you were to have a partnership with someone, who do you love batting with? Who do I love batting with? Um, I think it would be Sophie Devine. Mm. I mean, no, because when she bats, you know, all you have to do is just rotate the strike and go at the other end and just let her face all the balls. Because, you know, once she's in that zone, in her mode, you know, the beach mode that she goes into, you know, you just see the ball sailing over the rope. So, yeah, it would be her. Okay, so you'd be the JP Dumini part of the partnership. Just okay, you know, okay. Get off okay. <laughs> Take the strong. Slowly there. So it's a massive honour in that. You need someone at the other end. You can't do it on your own. That's the beauty. At least, at least try to quit between the wickets. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a part, a part of it is it's a spectator sport. So, you know, uh, I don't mind being the spectator in that, in that regard. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I, like the way, I like the way AB said, at least. He's quick. Yeah. So, yeah. And you can work with something. <laughs> <laughs> Abram, so um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Faf was actually on the, on the chat as well. And we spoke a little <laughs> bit about Sri Lanka, if you remember, in uh, 2013. And um, it, was a, it was an interesting tour for us, not necessarily just from a, from a playing point of view, but from a faith point of view. If you remember that time we spent in um, AB's room, so not AB, uh, David Miller's room, oh. and where all of us committed our lives to, to Christ. And, uh, you know, we spoke a little bit about that experience, particularly the flash moment, if you remember, where I thought it was uh, a Holy Spirit moment. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it, is, it has been an interesting journey for all of us, I believe, in that you know, we, we've, we've had some amazing experiences on the field. We've, as you mentioned, their friendships go, will last a lifetime. And uh, if one had to look at your faith, I know you, you grew up in a, in a Christian home and, and, and faith was always a big part of your life, particularly in your family. How would you, how would you look at it that it impacted your, 
playing career, particularly from a faith point of view, what, what is the, what is the impact? What is the big difference for you in, in uh, even today's time where you're still playing? I think the nice thing when it comes to that is, um, and I didn't always do this, but I, I, I realized at a, at a time that because of faith, it sort of takes it out of your hands as a player. And that is, that is the most amazing feeling where you, and that's where you, what, what you want to achieve as a player, when you start in your career, you actually want to bet or play like it's, it doesn't really matter that much. And that's exactly what it, what it did for me. Um, I, I fought with it so much in the early, early part of my career that, you know, it's about me and I, wanna, I don't want to let my family down. Let, I don't want to let myself down. I work so hard to be here. And it's all about me. And it's really, really difficult to live life like that, not only play cricket like that. Yeah. Um, and once you realize, you know, I well, just let go. He's there, let him take over. That's what it's all about after all. He wants to be there in those moments for you. My whole, my whole career sort of changed. This happened a few times throughout my life, but I'm talking specifically career because that's what you asked. Mm. But early in my 20s, 23, 24, somewhere around there, I was fighting for dear life for two or three years to sustain that protein setup. And there was, a, there was a particular couple of moments where I sort of just reminded myself, you know what, it's not about you. Just let go, relax, play cricket. That's what he blessed you with. It's your talent. And make it about him, you know, sort of when you walk out, literally make a conscious decision to say, listen, I'm just here to entertain the people for you. And it's not about me and lifting myself up, but it's for you. And that, that's what changed everything for me. Yeah, and that's, and that's been a, a true inspiration, obviously, you know, for all of us. And if you, if you think, Jim, for you, uh, you know, if you don't know, AB, AB, uh, Jim is only 19 years old. And... <laughs> The, the amazing thing that, that I've gotten to understand her and learn more about her, she's shown immense maturity. And would you say, Jim, that that has purely been the fact of that surrendering process, that serving process, that thought process of that it's not about you, as he's mentioning? Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, you know, the more you get to know about Jesus and you know about what he's done for you the more you realize okay I am created for bigger things than just myself that's what AB just said you know and uh, you know the amazing thing about faith is you know it has taught me so much it has also taught me you know that just because we've accepted Jesus doesn't mean that you know life will be a smooth sailing you know Jesus himself said that there will be trials, there will be tribulations, there will come times, you know, where, you know, things won't go the way you want to go. But at the end, it all comes to, you know, trust. you got to trust your life in his hands and, you know, just know that he loves you enough that he won't fail you ever with that. And he will make sure you end up on the best path for your life. So I think, you know, that actually changes your perspective completely when you go out there on the field. I mean, I totally agree to what AB said, you know, when you go out there, you just want to do, you want to do one thing is to play for him and please him and, you know, try and win people for him through that. And that's actually an honor given to us, all of us, you know, that we can do something for him. Mm. Yeah. Hey, but you said, I think you said the phrase, what he's blessed me with. And I always love asking sportsmen these questions. How much of your skill, and I know you play so many sports, you probably could have played for South Africa in eight different sports. How much of that ability is God given? You genuinely think this is a gift I've got to use versus your work ethic and actually you've worked really hard to get where you are. Like what's the, how do you see it? Well, I also got my work ethic from him, so it's 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Uh, yeah. uh, no, it's, it's I, I think it's the whole makeup of, it, of a human being that you are and that you sort of become once you grow a bit older, once you start understanding yourself a bit more and your purpose and where you fit in with the world. And so it's, it's quite complicated, to be honest, to, to, to sort of put this, to, to sort of um, explain the whole situation. It's, it's, it's a tough question and I can go really deep with it, but, but I'd say it's everything. I mean, that's, that's why we live. That's, why I, that's certainly why I'm here is, is, is to live for him. Um, so I, and, and a very fine line, Jim, to come back to what you said is I, I don't walk out and say, um, sort of help you score runs because <laughs> you can get yourself into a big disappointment um, if, you, if you do that. It's just a matter of really surrendering and, and, and letting him know that it's not about you but it's about him. And when you get out for a duck, that's, that, I always see that as a little bit, bit of a challenge to sort of keep my head up high and once again turn to him because that's what he wants us to do. Um, especially when it doesn't go well, 
not to sort of try and fight through it by yourself, but he wants to be by your side. And, and that's the beauty of it all. But um, I'd say every, everything about me is, is for him. Um, I don't always get it 100% right. Um, but I certainly try to, to remind myself constantly that it's not about me because it's such a human, naturally human thing to sort of turn to yourself mm. and you want to sort of get yourself out of trouble or raise yourself up or when there's a moment to shine or to, to, to build the ego up a bit, you want to be the guy to stand there with your face. So it's, it's a naturally, it's a human thing to do, but to constantly remind myself that it's not about me, that's, that's the most important thing. And if you ask me about my talent and work ethic, it's, it's all in, 100%. And the amazing thing, Abraham, is, you know, just in terms of what you're speaking about, that it's about him. And, and, and I think about our experiences of the last decade. And I, and I specifically talk about uh, field stuff, you know, where we put a, a big emphasis and focus on connecting relationally. And, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking of it, whether it was 2013 or 2014. I remember we in Bangladesh and we, we, we started Bible study groups, right? Uh, within the South African team. And I remember there, I don't know if you remember this, 13 people were in the room, if you remember. And the, the thing, the reason why this comes up for me is it was a reminder right now how it is, it is far beyond us. And, and at times when, when you're so driven to win, when you're so driven to, to put in a big performance, we can sometimes lose the focus of the greater purpose of why we are here and why we do what we do. We have an opportunity to use cricket as a vehicle to share the gospel, and sharing the gospel doesn't necessarily mean preaching, uh, you know, biblical scriptures. It can just be literally a representation of Him. I see it almost as just like light walking into darkness, and, and that that's purely what it is. And we take that pressure off ourselves to, you know, what you know what about Jesus? This that you know, it's just being you. It's just being authentic and real. And, and that's what I loved about, about you, uh, particularly in, in the cricketing spaces, is that you were very authentic in trying to be the real you and, and, and shining his light. So, so that, is, that has been really amazing to watch. Thanks, Travis. And I, if I could just add one thing about our... <coughs> sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. <coughs> if I can add one thing about our sessions that we used to have, what made it very special for me, and that sort of can relate, we can relate with it, what's happening in the world today is we have a lot of racial issues yeah and i remember there was one um there was one meeting i think it was in india actually um i can't remember the town its name it was called time we played a t20 there we were once again about 13 guys in the room but when it came to bible study it was always a, a bit of a barrier to get over um especially for me um I, I i never really saw everyone getting together and sort of just praising god you know um, it was weird for me to see all those guys in the room and it was from all races and religions and not religion, same, same religion, all races. <laughs> but that was, that was the most special thing to see and with what the issues we have in the world today is so racially um, um, connected, you know, and it, it, it's horrible to see. But once again, I think if you turn to, turn to God and turn to Jesus, you sort of forget about those issues that we have. And yeah. It's a man-made thing, which, which is so silly and we can really get over it with just looking at him. Yeah, hundreds. Yeah, that's it. Great message. Mm. Great message. Uh, should we finish with a couple of questions, and then yeah. we'll uh, we can let AB go then. Right, last opportunity. What, what has the public got for us? The, uh, the <laughs> yeah. What have they got? This is my uh, favorite moment. Um, right, let's leave AB till last. Let's build it up. Right, Jemmy, what is your favorite Christian devotional song? Um, for me, it would be Good, Good Father by Chris Tomlin. So that would be, yeah, that would be my favorite one. Very good. Very quick. I thought that might have stumped you for like 30 seconds. Very quick. <laughs> um, okay, JP, how's the future of the Proteas looking in your opinion? Uh, be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, think, I think there's two parts to that. So why, why I say there's two parts, the easiest part, let me put it this way, is I think it's going to look very different in terms of what we're facing right now. So mm -hmm. the pandemic, because it's so uncertain, it is, um, we're not sure how we're going to be playing, where we're going to be playing. And the reason I'm also saying that is because if you see what's happening around the world in terms of uh, different sporting codes, you don't have 
crowds watching, uh, you know, you're just literally playing the game. And with that in mind is how are we going to respond as a national team? You know, how do we, I mean, AB, you know, like, well, Jim as well, playing in front of a crowd just brings out something different in you. So how's it going to be from that perspective? I think in terms of where we stand as the Proteus now, I think it is, it is a defining moment for us going forward. You know, defining the, the brand of cricket we want to be playing, um, who we are, who we're representing. So why I say that is, you know, there's, there's, quite a, there's, there's been a few changes in terms of personnel uh, from a coaching and management staff to players. So, you know, we've, we've grown up in the last 10 years, particularly myself and AB, where Protea Fire, the team culture, has been such a prevalent part of who we are. And my hope is that that doesn't disappear. And, and that comes back to the point of representing or playing for something more than yourself. And from a faith point of view, we know where that identity lies. Added to that, from a, from a cultural and a South African context, how do we epitomize and, and understand what it means to represent 60 million people. And that has been driven through culture. So now with, with the sort of transference of God with, from a management and a player perspective, how can they uniquely adjust that to suit who they are? You know, bringing their, um, their different touch and feel to, to the culture and drive it holistically and make sure that that, that culture part of, of the national team remains and you know from a legacy point of view as well you know that players understand that they they not only to perform but to leave a legacy for the next generation we often had the saying on in the national team where the sun is shining on you at the moment and eventually the the sun will set so the sun is set on on us but we hope that we leave something behind that you know the next generation kind of carries on and ha having them have that mindset as well what are they going to be leaving behind? And I think that's the opportunity that presents right now. Unless you both come out of retirement, in which case no. the sun. The next, <laughs> next morning, after the sun comes back again. We're in a valley. We're getting into mountain top again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that for the next podcast. Yeah. Um, okay, AV. Um, got a question. How do you manage to get underneath full deliveries so quickly and easily? Hmm. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> um, look, uh, I think nine out of ten times the bowler sort of um, lets in, or he sees me moving around, and he sort of I think crumbles under the crowd and the and the pressure of the whole situation. But there are a couple of occasions where I have no idea where I pull some shots of. Um, I think it's a bit of luck. <laughs> now there, there's a couple. I, I think specifically. Um, I think it was Sandeep Sharma from Sunrisers. I moved across way too far to the offside and he literally hit the perfect leg stump Yorker. So I, I, I was about to walk off the field and before, when I looked to the left, the ball was like sailing 40 meters over the boundary. That's just, um, I, I think just in the moment, you sort of commit to something. I think that's what it comes down to is commitment. Um, you see something happening, it's happening fast. There's no time to think about it. And all you have is to commit. And um, I think that's, I get to put off some of those shots. So to add to that, Liam, I mean, as a spectator sport, as I mentioned, and standing on the other side and watching this unfold, you know, many <laughs> times, uh, it's interesting because AB had this thing, right, where particularly in pressure moments, you know, a lot of a lot of players would go so, kind of in their bubble where they try to survive, uh, whether it be Test cricket, whether it be One Day cricket or T Twenty cricket. There, there, there are certain moments, let's say you, you lose two wickets in one over, for instance, and AB walks to the wicket. You know, one would think that, okay, we're going to consolidate and kind of get yourself in. Now, he had this amazing knack that he would transfer that pressure immediately. I remember, if you remember, I don't know if you remember this game, um, AB. We were playing in England, against England at, at uh, Wanderers. And Stuart Broad was, was bowling. And I was standing on the other side, I was defending, you know, just trying to get the partnership going. AB mm -hmm. walks in, double steps him, and hits him straight over his head, like in his first few balls. And I'm like, jeepers, okay. <laughs> and we come together and I was like, yo, Abraham, what, what happened there? He says, no, I need to make sure I'm, I'm letting him know that I'm here. You know what I mean? And that was, you know, you talk about belief. We were speaking about Virat. 
And I think that was the difference is that he certainly had this ability to transfer pressure in an amazing way and be consistent with it because a lot of us will try and do it. But the, the word he mentioned there was commitment that in those moments when he made decisions, there was no holding back, whether it was sweeping somebody, whether it was coming down the wicket, that commitment was, was fully there. You know what, guys, if I can chip in there, I'm, I'm very happy that he brought up that game because I've got a nice story about that game. <laughs> so it, it's, it's right what he says, and, and Broad was actually completely over me in that, in that test series just a couple of weeks prior to that early on. So I was definitely feeling pressure from his side. He was bowling with amazing skill throughout that series. He had me jumping all over the place. He was actually on top of me, and I had to do something. I decided in this ODI series, I'm not going to allow that mm. to happen. And so, amazing fight back from JP and I. We got it back there, 50 partnership. That's and, then then, yeah. and then he ran me out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and well, um, you remember that, Chris Wokes? Oh, he had to short leg, the ball rolled right back to Wokes, and he's oh. like, yeah, he's halfway down the wicket. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm 30 off 25 balls. I'm seeing the ball like a balloon, and I'm just next oh. minute I'm in the bedroom again. At least we won the game, Judge. <laughs> yeah, we did. we did. That's JP just doing his 20% in that partnership. There we go. <laughs> I, I was trying to get the limelight, dude. I mean, he's been getting the limelight for years, man. Come on. I need to get <laughs> uh, okay, uh, move, over. move over, AB. That's the message. Yeah. Um, AB, quick last one. Who's the funniest player you've shared a, a changing room with? I think we all say the same thing, more no more cool. Yeah. Um, I, can, I can add Neil McKenzie to that. Um, he was a bit older, so not everyone played with him for a, a lot of years, but James was certainly there for, for, for Neil Mack and for Mourne. Both of them are like the life of the party. Um, they're actually both quiet guys, but when they do open their mouths, they're very funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, JP's told us about Mourne before, so I was yeah, not surprised by that. If I can add one more thing, I've been fiddling with this little coaster the whole time, and I... I just decided to read one word on the end. It says, it says potential. You and your talents are not an accident. You are special in God's eyes. You have distinct gifts and talents. You have shoes to fill that no one else can wear. Inside you is enormous potential just waiting to be developed and put to use. And it's completely by, by chance that I have this in my hand the whole time. Then. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Liam, you can just pick up that mic and drop it. <laughs> oh yeah, Fair product placement. Oh, guys, I got this. Yeah. If you want to look, up, if you want to look it up, it's John Maxwell. I don't even. I'm not sure what that guy is, but yeah, yeah he's a bit of a legend. Cool. Yeah, he okay. is. Well, yeah, it's been so much fun, AB. Thank you so much for your insight for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. It was a great uh, privilege and an honour to speaking to you all. Um, I haven't met all of you before, so Jemima, good luck with your career. Hope you're following with interest and. Thank you. Um, yeah, keep the boat afloat on the, in the UK side as well. <laughs> yeah. And James, I'll see you soon, I'm sure. For sure, brother. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Amy. Awesome. Thanks for everyone for listening. <laughs>